This is Damian McNamara with Global Medical News Network at the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting in Orlando where Dr. Paul Nathan presented results of a study looking at more than 8,000 adult survivors of childhood cancer and specifically at how many of them are following recommendations for surveillance and screening. He found that fewer than 12% are getting a colonoscopy as we recommended within the past five years. Fewer than 27% had ever had a complete skin exam and just slightly more than 46% had a mammogram. Dr. Nathan, can you tell me uh, just what the take-home message is from your study that you presented today about the uh, adult survivors of childhood cancers? So the take-home message is we know that adult survivors of childhood cancer are at a very much increased risk of getting another cancer at some point in their life. And as a result, we have clear guidelines for surveillance that may pick up those cancers earlier, for example, breast cancers, colorectal cancer, skin cancer as a result of radiation. When we looked in our survivor population, to see our survivors actually following these guidelines, we found that the minority are not. And one thing I've seen is um, there tends to be a lot of skin cancers in ad adult survivors mm -hmm. of children. Is that, is that true? Did you find that? or? So what we, not in my particular research, but in the same cohort, uh, about 7% of survivors will get a skin cancer, not melanoma, the other kinds of skin cancers, by the time they reach 30 years from the original cancer. So it is the number one group of cancers that we see in survivors as a result of radiation in most cases. And I know you're doing a new study where you're going to look at a more recent and more mm -hmm. contemporary cohort. Uh, what do you kind of expect to be the difference because treatments have evolved over time? So we would hope to see some of the long-term side effects be less common and, and, and certainly um, as we've learned over time what the long-term side effects of therapy are, we've tried to reduce those treatments that we think are more toxic than the benefit we get from them. So our hope is that we will see less toxicity than we've seen on, on recent studies. Our hope is also that survivors treated more recently may be more aware of the importance of screening for long-term side effects and so that, for example, compliance with surveillance as we looked at in this study will hopefully be better in this new group of survivors. Hopefully, you know, they'll come back more often and... Well, we're hoping that as oncologists will be better at educating you know, back in the 1970s and 80s, a lot of focus was just on cure at any cost. Now that cure rates are over 80% of pediatric cancer, there's a real focus on balancing toxicity um, and survival. And so there's a real push to try and reduce those toxicities. And one of those things is education. Teach your survivors about what they had and how to look after themselves long term. So what were you surprised about when you looked at your final results? I don't think we were surprised. I think we were disappointed. I think we'd, you know, this, this portion of the study was given to survivors in 2002, 2003, so not that long ago, and we'd hoped by then because there was already a fair bit of talk about the risk of second cancers, particularly second breast cancers, we hoped the survivors would be more compliant with the breast cancer screening guidelines, but less than half of them were actually compliant with our recommendation for annual mammograms, so that was disappointing. Okay, and um, are there any un unanswered questions you still want to look at? There's lots of unanswered questions. I, I think the main one is, so what do we do about it? You know, it's all well and good to describe what we see in this population. Figuring out the interventions that will make a difference is going to be a fair bit harder. And, and several of my colleagues are looking at innovative ways of educating survivors and empowering survivors in order to, to increase their surveillance. Okay. And that's the direction this is all going. Thank you, Dr. Nathan. This has been Damian McNamara, Global Medical News Network.